guys, this is Grace with Signal Designs and I'm going to walk you through how to make a leather cuff. Um, as you can see, there's lots of tools and uh, supplies that I use. Um, basically, I just use whatever I have lying around. Like I, I do a lot of repurposing of jewelry. Um, so yeah, start walking you through it. These are all um, eyelets and rivets and grommets and some beads. You can see this is, I'm going to use one of these beads from this uh, old necklace that I have. I'm going to take it off. Essentially what I do for um, what I do for a leather cuff is I sort of wrap around my own wrist first to see how it will look. I mean everyone's wrist is different lengths or different widths obviously. Um, but I just use myself because I'm here <laughs> for myself. Um, and then I cut it. Okay, well this is a leather hole punch, so I'm just going to punch some holes where my bead holes are going to go. And I'm also going to glue it on to make sure it's super secure. First I have to mark it with a pen. to use as thick of cord as I can that will fit through the bead. This one I'm going to have to use a little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to just go with thread for this one because that cord is too thick.
actually an upholstery tool, um, but I'm using it for my cuffs. floor to do it because it's really, I need like my full body weight. Okay. Okay, and there's one half of our snap right here. Just want to make sure it's lined up correctly again. Looks like it is. And then we have to change the, uh, these are called dye. different colors here, violets that I use. So this is one technique, it's the snap cuff, and then I also make wrap cuffs, which is what it sounds like, it's just a wrap around your wrist. Once again, I, I match it up to my wrist to see how it's going to look. And these are a little more interesting in my opinion just because they have, there's more layers to work with and it looks kind of like elfish um, and woodsy. So I always go with the part that's um, thickest and I start adding um, 
beads and decorations on that part first. So I'm going to add this little wood bead on here. And once again, I'm going to line it up and mark it and cut it or punch it and uh, tie it on. Okay, so I basically just put on a grommet with my little grommet setting tool and tied a piece of suede string around the in, on the inside and then I glued it down to reinforce it. And um, when it's on, it looks pretty cool. And just tuck the string in. And if you're going out dancing or something, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's really secure. But right now I'm just tucking it in to show how it looks. It's got, if you're into that elven look, it's kind of uh, good for that. So, so there's cuff number two. And you know, some of these take me a few hours if I get really, you know, ornate with them. Some of them, like this one took me a little while. Some of them take me like, you know, 15, 20 minutes or something. So. a metal stamp which I used here. I don't know if you can see that. If you zoom in, because it's like an imprint. It's almost like an embossing. And you have to use like a sponge and wet the leather and then heat this up, hold it on there and then pound it really hard. And um, it makes like a little embossing on there. Um, yeah, I think that's about the extent of what I can show right now. Hello and welcome to Philadelphia Music, Dance and Modern Art Show. Today we're here with Grace from Signal Designs. She is a jewelry maker. Uh, she makes cuffs and earrings and other stuff like that. Uh, me and Grace met a few years back at Burning Man and uh, we're good friends and uh, we wanted to feature her on the show today. Uh, Grace, could you say hello to Philadelphia? Hi, Philadelphia. Excellent. Uh, Grace, could you tell us a little bit about your craft? What, what do you do and what do you love about it? Sure, well, um, right now I'm creating leather cuffs um, and other leather jewelry. I do earrings. Um, I made these earrings. They're like a kind of like single helix um, designs. 
And um, I really got into leather recently, very recently. Um, I just went to a leather handbag and accessory outlet near my house and I bought a bunch of scraps and um, I just started playing around with it and um, you know, testing the limits of it and seeing what I could do and I just kind of went off from there. So. What is it about the, the leather that, that you like because uh, you're pursuing the leather? So what is it about um, leather that you like? I like, I don't know, I like everything about it. I mean, I like how it feels um, when you wear it. And um, I like how it's kind of, it's a bit of like a temperamental material to work with as far as, um, you know, what it allows you to do to it and how you can manipulate it. It's not the easiest to work with, so there's a lot to learn about it. Um, and so I pretty much just taught myself um, like through YouTube videos um, and like other online tutorials, um, how I could how I could make stuff and uh, bought stuff at the store and and took it from there. And every piece is different because I go by the cut of the leather that I have. So um, you know, if it's like a piece that's like slanted, I mean, for example, like this, every piece I make is irregular and asymmetrical. So I kind of go with the flow of. The, the scrap and the, the, the leather, and everyone's different, so it's fun. So you like the variety of it? Yes. Okay, excellent, and uh, Grace brings up one of the themes here in our show that, that we love to share with everybody in Philadelphia. Uh, she was not classically trained in leather. No, no. no not no. classically trained, she taught herself, and she really brings it to, you know, to, to fruition by her hard work and her desire to make some beautiful things and to create uh, for Philadelphia and for her friends. And, and I guess you're, you're making this a business because you're Signal Designs, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and um, you uh, said that you have challenges with leather. What, what is so challenging about leather? Uh, what? Well, there's, um, you know, there's obviously many different kinds of leather, depending on the animal it comes from. Um, you know, there's, it's hard to, you know, when I first started working with it, I was like, you know, trying to brand it and sometimes it gets all, you know, it gets crunched up and um, just kind of different things like that since it's like a natural material, you know, it's going to react kind of sometimes unpredictably to what you do to it. So you really have to like, you know, know what is good leather, what's bad leather as far as like the hide goes. Um, so yeah, I guess. That's my answer to that question. <laughs> okay, I mean, that works. That's your answer. That, that's what we wanted to hear. We wanted to hear your answer, your genuine thoughts. Um, when we taped you uh, creating your cuffs, uh, you mentioned that you use a lot of repurposed materials. Yes. Um, something that, that we really appreciate here at uh, Philadelphia Music Dance and Modern Art Show. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how you repurpose materials? Sure, yeah. Um, I have a lot of old costume jewelry that is often given to me just by people who don't want it anymore. And um, I'll just take it apart. You know, I make, besides the leather stuff, I make, you know, more traditional jewelry, you know, like wire working and stuff. So I have wire cutters and I'll just take apart old jewelry and, you know, take the beads off one necklace and, you know, apply it. Like, you know, this one, this is a bead that was from a necklace that someone gave me. So, you know, it's fun to, to rearrange things and create something new. I agree. Um, now, you've showed us that one uh, twice. Uh, could you show it again? I know that's yeah, one of your sure. favorite ones. Uh, you mentioned to me that you like the uh, ink writing tool on it. Um, yes, I just could bought you a bunch us, of yeah, leather, a of, of, um, of rubber stamps. Um, and I, this is going to be like the next phase of, of my project, um, is using the rubber stamps to, uh, you know, create different designs and different pictures. And I got some really cool ones, so I'm excited. This one says, all you need is love on it. This is my aunt's. Thank you, Aunt Linda. <laughs> she Thank let you, me borrow Linda. her stamps as a, as a tester outer, so. Okay, great. And uh, the rubber stamps, what do they do exactly? Um, well, I mean, it makes a very neat, pristine print on the leather. And then um, I have a technique where I, you know, it'll, it'll be permanent. It'll stick on there forever. So it doesn't, so it doesn't the, like, the rub off or anything. The come off or anything Correct. like that. Great, great. And um, you have some other... Uh, wristlets uh, over there could you show some more sure, to and, yeah. and, and talk a little bit about yeah. you know why they you know what inspired you to make them why they're you know why you love them sure and such. um i mean this is a, a piece of a scrap that i got at the um at the leather outlet and um i kind of fell in love with like the rough like the raw look on the outside which is typically not used in leather design so um it's kind of unique in that sense um 
and I also am really inspired by like a, kind of like the elf, elfin, elvish um, style in a way. So um, yes, that, that's this one here. Okay, uh, can we see another one? Yes. It's very beautiful, by the way. Thank you. And there's another one. This one's a little bit simpler. And um, looks this, sort of uh, Indian. Yeah, these are actually these are actual Native American beads that I found in a, a curiosity shop <laughs> a while back, and I just I kind of strung them on, and and they look they look cool when they're on. Because um, it's they look a lot different than uh, when you just have them. So that was inspired by uh, Indian culture. What what yeah, other yeah. things inspire you to create when uh, when you're looking at a piece of blank leather um, and you have some repurposed or ready to be repurposed jewelry in front of you? How do you come up with something? What what inspires you to, it's to make mostly, things? It's mostly what I have available to me. Like I kind of have everything spread out in my studio, and then I'll see what. It's mostly it goes by color too. I'm very um, keen on. Uh, putting certain colors together that I think look well, and I also when I place when I place things um, on my leather, like here's a slight example of that. I try to convey some type of movement um, with where I put the beads. Um, this is maybe not the best example, but um, you know, so movement and um, color. Color and movement is mm -hmm. what inspires you. Yes. Excellent. Uh, you, maybe you should have gone into ballet as well. <laughs> I, did. I used to take ballet. Oh my God. <laughs> Long See? time ago. See? We're reading <laughs> thoughts here. That's great. Um, so you also make uh, jewelry, the uh, earrings. Could yes. you tell us a little bit about those and maybe show uh, the audience what kind of um, earrings you've done? Sure. Well, I make you know stuff like this, um, the spiral earrings, um, and I also do feather earrings. Here's some. There's a couple of them here. And uh, are there any there that are your favorite? Which one do you really like there? Or do you just love them all? I like them all, I think. I don't know if I have a favorite. They're all your children. You can't <laughs> just love one of them, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, my friends and I started making these a while back. Um, so yeah, I, I think I like, these are the same beads actually that's on here. Mm -hmm. You can tell it's like the Native American type of right. look. So what, um, what type of tools do you use uh, to make all these things? Um, could you tell us a little um, bit about them? Sure. Well, for the earrings, you mean? Uh, both. Um, well, for, I use, um, well, I use needle, needle nose pliers a lot for the wire work. Um, I use, you know, obviously wire, obviously feathers. Um, more for the leather, there's a lot more tools that go into it as far as um, a snap setter. I have a snap setter, which is actually used in upholstery, but it's a really good tool. If anyone out there works with leather, get a, a press and snap tool because it's, it, it's, it puts really secure snaps on the cuffs. That's, that's what you used and you, you were down on the ground using all your weight to, yeah, to press yeah, that down. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, yes. Yeah, it's, it's not the easiest tool, but it does a really good job. Um, and beads, I use a lot of um, cording, because mm -hmm. I also, in addition to gluing the beads on, I tie them in the back, so they're secure. Um, I have a brander that I use to brand the leather to make designs in it. Is that like a heated brander? Yeah, it gets really hot. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else I have. There was the stamper, I think you mentioned in, in your Oh uh, yeah, and then I have the metal stamping, which kind of embosses it. Mm -hmm. It makes an imprint, and um, I, I heat that up as well. And um, you have to like wet the leather with a sponge, and then wait till it's a certain um, amount of dryness before you can like pound into it. But I have a lot of um, different metal stamps too that I, I work with. So okay. yeah, there's a lot. There's like a huge variety of, of stuff you can where, do. Where do you get those? Uh, if one of our viewers wanted to, to start creating um, things like, like you have with leather, yeah, I get, uh, where could they get these I things? I get most of my stuff on the internet. Okay. Um, Tandy Leather Factory has, is like the biggest supplier of leather working tools and leather crafting tools. Um, like if you Google like leather tools, you'll find Tandy Leather Factory. Um, and uh, yeah, and then other yeah, places. Your closet and friends. Yeah, and exactly. Like hand me downs like and, and things. Hand me downs. Yeah. Okay, needle nose pliers, you can always get a, a Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, I know that as, as mm. a construction person <laughs> and as a man. Um, so, what would you say 
really drives your creative passion. Um, did you go to school for this? You said no, you just picked no. it up. No, um, I just, so I just what, what, what drives you to, to create? Um, you know, it just, it really came out of the blue, like the passion to work with the leather, especially, and this is, you know, maybe six months ago or so, because I had had all these scraps just kind of sitting there for a really long time. And um, one day I just started making stuff. Like I kind of just got all my stuff together and, and looked at it all and just started doing it. And I really don't even know what inspired me. I mean, I'm very inspired by music, for sure. Um, what type of music it's, it's would, you, would you say? Uh, what type of music do you listen to? What, um, what I do you listen like? to a lot of um, electronic music, mostly um, uh, techno and, and psytrance, and um, kind of like world uh, ethnic based music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I listen to. Yes, yes, I do. Um, so, uh, a pile of leather. Some jewelry mm -hmm. and a, a good uh, Goa Citrus track mix. Yeah. And, and some, some Leatherman tools and, and anybody could start doing that. What would you say to a young person watching the show uh, that wanted to create? Would you what advice would you give them? Um, do it. Just go out and do it. Put on your favorite music. Put on your favorite CD and uh, just relax your mind and just create something. Okay, excellent. Um, you've also created your logo for uh, your company. Yes. Um, so now you're technically a graphic designer as well. With, yeah, I know, the, I know a small amount of Photoshop, <laughs> but not, nothing advanced. Okay, could you tell us a little bit about the logo that you've made? Uh, what sure, meaning yeah. does it have behind it? Yeah, um, it's, um, it's actually Morse code. Um, I don't know if you're going to show the logo on the... Yes, yeah, so we're going to show it and, and uh, okay. we're going to talk so about you'll it. See so it. They'll, they'll, um, <laughs> you will see it, Philadelphia. It's um, it's it's actually Morse code, and it's a um, there's a spiral in the middle, and then there's um, dots that kind of come off the spiral, and um, it's Morse code for Signal S I G N L, which is the company, and um, it kind of looks like a little person, which I like because it's kind of got like arms shooting off of it. Mm -hmm. It was it's the first stage of it, so it might evolve into something. The different. first iteration. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what's next for you? Are you going to build this into a brand, or, or if I'm enough hoping, people I'm look at to. it? Yeah, okay. I would love if, to. If Philadelphia wants to learn more about uh, Grace and Signal Designs, where can they go? Um, you can go to, um, I'm on Facebook, Signal Designs, S-I-G-N-L, um, and also Etsy. I have an Etsy shop, um, Etsy backslash, forward slash, or backslash? Backslash. Backslash um, shop, backslash Signal Designs. Okay, and um, they could find your jewelry as well as your uh, your leather cuffs and such. Yeah, I have everything. Everything is on there that I've done so far. So. Okay. Um, before we wrap up here on uh, Philadelphia Music, Dance, and Modern Arts, uh, is there anything that you would like to tell future Grace? Oh my gosh. I know we asked some deep <laughs> questions here on <laughs> this show. That is so deep. Um, keep on dancing. Keep on dancing. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, that's it for us here at the Philadelphia Music, Dance, and Modern Arts Show. This is Grace from Signal Designs. Thank you so much, Grace, for being with us. Thank you so much. It's a nice pleasure. Excellent. Thank you, Philadelphia, and check us out next week.